Paris saw another round of anti-government protests today after a violent weekend in the heart of the city. Ambulance workers blocked traffic in front of France's National Assembly building. They're demanding changes to working conditions. Now, this comes after Saturday's protests over a gas tax hike turned into a full-blown riot. More than 100 people were injured and more than 400 arrested. CBS News radio correspondent Elaine Cobb joins us now from Paris. Hi, Elaine. Explain for us, if you will, some of the factors that led to this violent weekend and today's demonstrations. Well, Tanya, as you said, it started with a new tax on gasoline, but it quickly became as that just was just a symptom of what is clearly a greater discontent here. The French are saying they believe that their cost of living just keeps going up, taxes keep going up, and wages are not keeping track. So they just felt this is too much. There's also... Uh, a feeling that the president is just a little too removed, that he's not listening enough to what the common man wants. Now, when you talk to the Yellow Vest protesters, many of them know what they don't want, but they're not entirely clear on what they do want. Mm. And so th that has made it much more difficult to actually negotiate a way out of this. And we've just had yet another little um, blip in that one, in that there were to have been talks tomorrow with the prime minister and representatives of the Yellow Vests, but now they say they won't go because of security reasons. Unclear what exactly they mean by that, but already it's been difficult to get anyone who's accepted as a legitimate representative because they are so disorganized and so divided. And these images that we're seeing coming out of Paris are just stunning. I mean, this is central Paris. This is not the outskirts. These are beautiful buildings that you're seeing with, uh, you know, bonfires in front of them. How extensive was the damage? And can you describe some of the violence that took place? Part of the reason there was so much violence was that there was a security cordon thrown up all along the Champs-Élysées. Anyone who wanted to go to the planned demonstration had to go through police searches. Now, I was on the Champs-Élysées on Saturday. There were fewer than 2,000 people there protesting peacefully. But those who didn't want to go through the police checks, either because they just didn't like the police or they were possibly already unhappy and planning something, or as some said to me, I feel I'm being funneled somewhere else. I don't trust them. Mm. So any of them who wouldn't go on, they headed for the Arc de Triomphe, which was left out of the security cordon, despite being just at the top of the Champs-Élysées. And that's where the running battles with police started from early in the morning. And other groups who came in from the outskirts of Paris or from around the country who came into the other train stations, realizing they couldn't get to the Champs-Élysées necessarily, decided to go somewhere else. So in fact, there were little groups along the center of Paris mm. um, setting up, you know, these bonfires, torching cars. And as the evening uh, came in and, you know, night fell, uh, groups were coming in from the uh, from the suburbs, according to police, adding to this, looking for trouble, looking for a chance to rob some shops. Now, that said, the police have confirmed that the majority of those they have in custody were yellow vest protesters. So there was an element of sort of anarchy that came up towards the end that possibly was not related to the protest. So, of course, this all took place while French President Emmanuel Macron was at the G20. How now are he and his government responding to this today? Already in Buenos Aires, he said, um, you know, I'm going to catch those responsible. This is not acceptable. He came back and immediately went to the Arc de Triomphe to see the damages. And today he's been meeting with um, political parties in France all across the board just to test the waters and to lay out what he's trying to do. He's now in a crisis meeting with his cabinet ministers, the relevant ministers, such as the interior, um, and he's already met with the mayor. But there are also talks planned with, for example, the head of the Paris region, who's very concerned about the effect on the economy in the run-up to Christmas, with shopping, with all the stores being closed, and also with tourism being affected. And the police unions want to talk as well, because they say, look, we need better planning for this. We're not sure what, but something needs to be done. Elaine Cobb in Paris. Elaine, thank you for your reporting. You're welcome.